Tanya and this is the beautiful Davina from London Curl. The London Curl <laughs> video number two. And this video is going to be the five things you want to know. That's ten. Five things you want to know if you want to teach in Dubai. Yeah, these are definitely things that you might not have thought. Like you're just thinking of the amazing weather, yeah. lifestyle. Number one is unions or the lack of unions. It's actually legal to have a union in Dubai. Just let that sink for a minute. Yeah. In the UK, I was part of the NUT. So I'm bad. How bad is the NUT? <laughs> I did not appreciate the strength of the unions yeah. in the UK. Yeah. Now, after the impact to not having a union has, obviously your work-life balance is not taken into consideration. In the UK, you have specific work times. You have yeah. specific hours a week that you can have a meeting. You have everything is laid out, and there's no working around it. And if it's any, if your school is anything like my previous school, normally your union rep is like the person that is ready to be like, yeah. no, yeah. like as soon as hey, this meeting's gone over time, yeah. we're done. Exactly. Like, People start walking like, out, yeah. five past. It's time to stop. No, this is this is not okay. It's time to stop. It's time to stop. You don't have that here, so just take that into consideration that when you come here, you can't be like, this is my third meeting this week because you yeah. can have four meetings a week. Yeah. That's basically just something to consider, that unions don't exist here, don't try to start one. <laughs> oh gosh, do <laughs> not, not try to start one. Illegal, it is illegal, definitely illegal. Point number two, uh, KHDA. KHDA are UAE equivalent of the English Ofsted. Mm -hmm. So they come into your school every year <laughs> yeah. Every yeah. year for three days when they're there, um, and they just inspect the school basically. I don't think it's as, as like as stressful as Ofsted, do you? No, I don't think it's as stressful. I do. I so as far I, as I know, I, all I get, I private schools get KHDA yeah, every year. But if you're a local school and um, and you're not in Dubai, I think, because I'm sure in Abu Dhabi they have a different, an equivalent to KHJ, but all private schools get an inspection and all private school students have to pay for their tuition. People have to pay for, like, the parents pay for school here. That being the case, they want the best of the best for what they're paying for. So the school puts a lot of pressure, I feel, on the teachers, that is going to have a real impact on how many parents are going to be sending kids to the school. So I feel like that's why around that time when the KHA is coming, the school is just like, ah! School is very stressful on the lead up to KHA. The aim is obviously to get the best education possible for the kids. For sure. But it is, it's intense. It's once a year and I guess you get used to it. Number three. Packages. Now this is a good thing you need to think about if you want to move, if you want to become a teacher in Dubai. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing about the package that says no to me. No, no. I'm I can say that you won't spend more than 5% of your salary on your monthly bills. I'm, I'm glad you said 5% <laughs> of your salary. I was like, then what have I been doing? <laughs> I mean, it's this, okay, to take into account, let's play devil's advocate here. I had you all of You more than 5%. No, I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. I'm not saying that. Oh, what I'm saying is, that I had all of the intentions in the world of saving so much coming out here that I was just like, well, I'm gonna get paid so much more than my last job, which I genuinely am. Yeah. And obviously, again, rent and everything. But you've also got to take into account that there is so much to do. There's never going to be a weekend. Perhaps, well, I've never experienced Ramadan before and we're about to go into Ramadan, but there's never going to be a weekend when there's not something going on. And you are always, if you're anything like me, going to experience FOMO, fear of missing out, because I find it so hard to stay in. Do you know what I mean? Like, especially when my friends are going out or if there's an event going on yeah. and there's food everywhere. I'm like a foodie, like <laughs> crazy. There's restaurants everywhere or from all over the world and it's just, the temptation to spend is so high that I think I've been, what's, made, what's helping me get through this and making me feel slightly better is I've been told that people don't tend to save in their first year. That's what I've been told and that's what I'm sticking to <laughs> because it makes me feel better about my current financial situation. Yes. But, but your your bills will not eat out your salary. No, no, no. And you can just enjoy it. You can enjoy it. Trust exactly. me. You will enjoy. That's and the key. Exactly. And on top of not having to pay for accommodation, you do have to pay for bills. But you also get medical insurance yes. cover, which yes. is a legal requirement. 
Um, you don't get free healthcare, but you don't. You only pay like 10% or something like that. I must admit, hand on heart, that my experience with the medical care out here has been like outstanding. Yeah. Like I think, obviously, with it being private, certain things that you might have to wait for months for in the UK. Even even trying to book a doctor's appointment can be difficult at times. I was thinking about this today. You're yeah. you're right. You oh. can. It's just instantaneous. Like you yeah. ring. I need an appointment. Cool. But they don't say cool, but they're like, <laughs> you come in at this time, you yeah. go in, and they will test you for everything. If you right. need an x ray, just go down the yeah. corridor, just go get there. the x ray, pay you 10%. A blood test, well, you're sorted. That you need way. drugs, here you go. That way. Like, <laughs> like it's not. You wait, wait for a letter for two weeks for a six mm. month appointment down the line, but it, that is, yeah, yeah, I do like that. And it's good that you get medical cover because. If it's not free and then you have to come and then worry about where do I go, what do I do and you know there's no support but you've got that medical yeah. support there so you don't have to worry about your healthcare and stuff. Yeah. If you work for like a bigger school for example, a lot of the times there's really good rates for teachers. I mean I drive a car, like my car, um, yeah, like I got a discount because of the school that I was working yeah. for. Been. Love a tangent, she does. I love a tangent. I do love a tangent. It's just because I was thinking of school. No, I was thinking of cars and I was you thinking of running. Think, uh, I'm just going to turn the AC on. Wait. She, she's, uh, she's getting too hot again. I, While she's getting hot, let me explain. I, like, filling up my car, <laughs> it's so cheap. So cheap. Like, if you think that you're, like, spending money on a car, it's going to be expensive. Like, you won't pay more than £15 for the tank. Yeah, £15. <laughs> Quite frankly, the maximum I've ever yeah. yeah. and it's it's like, and they pump it for you, which is just. I would a bonus. easily get a three liter vehicle because it costs so cheap to run. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, and yeah, it's it's insane. And so you don't be fooled by all these nice cars in Dubai that <laughs> people are driving because it's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. It's cheap. <laughs> like why not? Just exactly. slash the cat. And then can't. this is why we. Oh, well, I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, hmm? the students. So things to consider when you're able to buy the students. Students are different to the students that you're probably used to in different countries, which is normal. Definitely different. And um, upbringing is different. Yeah. Um, okay, consider this. Um, okay, so there's, there's lots, of, lots of differences. For example, I would say in the UK, a huge amount of students or a huge amount of children or people even our age, they might come from single parent families. Okay. Here, you have to be married to have kids anyway, so it's like most of them come from most kids come from like um, I wouldn't say more stable because I don't necessarily equate like right. a marriage as stability, but it, it's different. It does it. Two parents. Two parents. How? Um, but also, on, in addition to the two parents, a lot of the kids are brought up with nannies. Yeah. And it's very normal to have a nanny. And a lot of the kids, this is not necessarily the first country they've lived in. Yeah. So they're used to living in different countries and moving. So the, the students are so different. So there. Are you, you, you'd assume because they've moved to different countries that they're more mature. And in some cases they really are. Like there's, there's certain areas where they are more mature, but then maybe I feel like with nannies. Like, I, I don't know, it, it's just, it's very interesting. You can see clear differences. There's a, there's a, <laughs> There's a delay in um, maybe a student developing, say, maturity and responsibility if you have a nanny. Because I know um, sometimes some students that I've seen are like, oh, I want to call my nanny to get my PE kit. Yeah, so yeah, you don't yeah. have that sense of responsibility if you've you know, got someone looking after you 24-7. But on the other hand, having lived in XYZ, they are quite comfortable and yeah. constant speaking to an adult. Meeting new people. Yeah, so. they're very, very good at meeting new people. I definitely think that my banter in schools here is very different to my banter in the school. Yeah, I'm here. hilarious. I mean, Let me say. <laughs> I, I feel that my sarcasm at times isn't appreciated <laughs> as fully as it should be. These are all very general statements. Yeah, but, cool. um, the one thing I would say is, I personally, when I first got into teaching, um, my main aim was to help young people like me, so that might have come from more troubled backgrounds, not necessarily like a high, not very high income, and just generally, I know that at points when I was in school, I had kind of reached a point where I just, I didn't care, my focus was on the wrong things, and like, just generally, there, there was a tipping point where it could have e either gone really well for me, yeah. where I, I feel like I've done well now, 
or it could, I could have gone down like the wrong path. The satisfaction of helping a young person at that tipping point, because you can see, especially if you've gone through it, you can yeah. see it quite easy. Of helping a young person, it's, there's nothing like it. If you're, if that's your main aim in teaching, because I know it means a lot to me, but if that is your main focus in teaching, then you won't get that kind of fulfillment here. No. It, you still get that joy of helping yeah. a child that otherwise, like, well, just for like with anything, when, when a child gets it, when you yeah. know that you've taught something and a child gets it, it's just like, yes. Yeah, it's very different teaching a student who's, the, might possibly be the first student to go to college or university, yeah, yeah, yeah. than someone who's, parents and the CEO of a, you know. Yeah, it's so and different. It's so it's just a different experience. The kids are different, so that's just one thing to consider. And finally, number five, cinco. Thank, thank. <laughs> number five, parents. Mm -hmm. Love them, don't we? I love my mum, for sure. I'm oh, like, I thought you were talking about my mum. Yeah, I do, love them. I do love my parents. I do love my parents. And to be fair, please don't get the wrong question. I, there's so many parents here that I love as well, but it's so different. So different. It's so different because you see them a lot often. You, your correspondence a lot, a lot more frequent. Whereas in the UK, you might have parents evening. You might email parents if there's good or bad behaviour in your class. But here, the parents are a lot more hands-on. So this is a very umbrella um, statement, but. Some of the parents, maybe both parents aren't working, so maybe one parent might have more time to like come to school. It's that kind of old yeah. window policy where parents can just come to your classroom and be like, yeah. I'm having this problem. Yeah, it's also that in most of the schools, it's written into your contract that you have to respond to parents within 24 hours. And I know- Is that your contract? Yeah. Oh. It's definitely more frequent, it's more, it's like constant. And I feel like, I, I don't know. I, from some experiences that aren't necessarily good ones, um, I've had parents email me to justify certain things that their students, that their children are doing. And mm. to me, it's like, we're trying to bring out this kind of independence and, um, you know, responsibility in the students and accountability. And, you know, emailing me to say your child couldn't do this or that because of whatever, we're not, we're not finding excuses. So there are two different sides mm. of parents equally. So. It's just to take into consideration that they're a lot more hands-on than you might be A lot, to. lot more hands-on. I must say, what I'm very impressed by is the parents genuinely take yeah. so much interest in it. They are always there to support you. Yeah. And I've found it been pretty much wholly positive if I have contact with a parent needing some form of support with either behaviour or just if I feel like a child needs extra bit of support, they will do that. They will be yeah. there. So it's, it's different, sure. it's very different, it's very intense, but it's good intensity most of the time. These are just five things that we think you should know if you want to teach in the UAE. We have also done a video on the process of applying for a teacher, and you can find that on London Curls. I'll put the video right yeah. there. Cross <laughs> my <laughs> yeah. So please check it out as well. So if you're, yeah, if you've watched this and you want to become a teacher, please come and watch my video uh, because we definitely run down all of the stresses that you might face and hopefully it'll put you, it'll put you at ease because there's a lot to go through and you might think you're alone. Yeah. Trust me, we've both been through it. For sure. But overall, I'd say that we like, we love it. Yeah. Two thumbs up from me. Yes, and it is an experience that you should really, For sure. really consider doing. Well, shout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Oh, if you have any questions, please leave them below and we will get back to them. Yeah, subscribe.